there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com. I'm the mom of 15, married 37 years to my husband, homeschooling for about 30 years, and I've been talking a lot lately about the McGuffey readers, the wonderful things about them and why I use them almost exclusively for my language arts program. I do do a few other things, but I mean, language arts covers a lot of things, right? But for reading, and for basic writing and spelling and to learn grammar patterns in English, what I prefer is, are the McGuffey readers. Now this, this, this video could have come out earlier, but just as I was recording it a few days ago, we experienced one of, experienced one of those horrible hailstones that trashed a lot of stuff. One of my cars has all kinds of pits in it. And it just started as I was making the video. And then the, then the, um, the electricity went off for a couple of hours, so there was no making that video that day. Um, so we're, everybody's fine, everyone's recovered, but um, it's just one of those things that happens. But So here I am today, and I'm going to talk to you about how to place your child in the McGuffey Readers. And this is really difficult, especially if you already you have a child that's already learned to read or is in the process of learning to read and you want to know about grade levels and all that type of thing. So the first thing I want to talk about is where I got some of my information from and that's from the writings of Ruth Beechick. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. She's been very instrumental in helping a lot of homeschoolers. Um, she's no longer with us. She's with the Lord. She loved the Lord and she was, um, she was really helpful. She wrote this book and some others like it. Uh, the three R's, um, a home start in reading, a strong start in language, and an easy start in arithmetic. This is like the com combination of the three of these books, and um, it has a lot of really good information in it. If you have a chance and you're just beginning to teach young children, this is uh, for grades K through three, and it's a really nice reference book. And, and if you have never taught anyone any of these subjects, if you read this, it will help you when you're making any curriculum choices or when you're trying to teach your kids or you're running into a trouble spot. Reading this will give you a really good idea of how to proceed. The next book kind of in this whole series is You Can Teach Your Child Successfully. Now this is grades four through eight. This is another excellent reference book. And so what I did is I took ideas from here and from here as well as this book, which is the parent teacher guide to the original McGuffey readers. You'll notice the different, the, I mean, the, the similarity in how they look because this was also published by Mott Media. Now in here, she kind of explains um, the flow of how a child learns how to read. Okay, now um, she has four stages here in this, and stage one is decoding, stage two is fluency, stage three is information, and stage four is advanced comprehension. In other words, this is how children are learning. Okay, in stage one, they are mostly trying to decode. They do have a little bit of fluency in certain areas, and a little bit of information they can glean. And that increases in stage two, see, then they have more fluency. Um, they're not decoding as much, and they are gathering still about the same information. However, when you go to stage three now, they're gathering lots more information. They really aren't decoding at all, except for in larger words. And, um, they uh, are past fluency, they're getting fluent. Okay, now stage four is when they're reading for information and also advanced comprehension. So those are the different stages. Now she has, in general, what you would be looking for is the decoding stage one is generally grades one and two, as we think of. Stage two is generally grades two and three. Stage three is generally grades four to eight. And stage four is grades nine to 12, you know, with the advanced comprehension and gathering information. So I hope that gives you kind of an idea at what you're looking at. When we're talking about the McGuffey readers, however, um, we are not speaking here of, um, of grade levels according to reading levels. Okay, it's a totally different idea. The pictorial eclectic primer would be covering um, mostly, you could go from, actually from kindergarten, 
you know, because we're basic, we're sounding out basic words. Kindergarten, what maybe kindergarten, through maybe uh, a higher first, maybe early second grade level of reading. As you can see, towards, in the beginning of the book I showed you, it was just basic, they have an alphabet in here, and you're just, these are very basic short words. And towards the end, we are actually reading whole pages um, of text. And so, yeah, this is the very last pages actually in this book. So even though it's called a primer, you could actually like um, late first, early second grade here. Now, the first grade reader then goes through and we are starting, you know, where we're doing a little review at the beginning, just like is normal in other books. We are going to do a little bit of review. The first sentence, the first lessons aren't as complicated as the ones further in the book, as you can see. And by the end of the book, then we are booking. We are moving along and the last lesson, which is called Goodbye, is actually one, two, two and a half pages long. The words are now two syllable words and they're com uh, compound words, some of them. This is one of the last lessons in the book, as you can see. Now the text is bigger, the words are shorter, the sentences aren't as complex. Okay, so that's, that I would say would be still about second, maybe going into third grade. So you could say this is second to third grade right here. And then we go into the second reader, which is high second, early third grade at the very beginning. Now there's a, I guess there's a big jump here. Okay, so here is the first lesson. This is the start of it. This is the end of it. The text is smaller. The word list is a lot longer, you can see. And the words are increasingly um, more complex. Now they're not that complex at first, of course. And it's pretty easy to read, even though, let's see, even though the text is smaller, the lesson itself is not that much longer than the last lesson in the um, first grade reader, or the first reader, I'm sorry, it's not great. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and this can go all the way through. Now, this book gets more and more complex, and it kind of goes all the way through. This is one of the, this is lesson uh, 50, 57? Yeah, lesson 57, if you can see that. So, it's getting a little more complex. See, this, this actually, this lesson is over two pages long. I think, like, it's almost five pages long. You see, there's where it ends. And there are questions here, I'll, I hope you notice, in this book. At the end of the lesson, there will be questions and there will be words. Now, I haven't used these questions. I tend to stray away from these because these questions tend to have a very specific answer. And that's not what I'm after. What I'm after is if they understand the, the lesson, the story, from their perspective. So I will ask them questions about it. Actually, what I do mostly is use my lesson books and they can write about it themselves or draw about it, something that was significant, and I will ask them questions. Now, these word lists here, if you will see, become more complicated as you go along in this book. Now, they're long, and but there are words in here that are multisyllabic, such as mischievous and unintimidated and independence and those kind of things. So they'll have to know a few, and usually in these word lists, he lists the simpler words first and then leaves the multisyllabic words to the last word. I call them, I've just noticed that as we've gone along. Also, in this reader, we're going to introduce some poetry. And um, what's really great for those of us who appreciate Charlotte Mason is that poetry is a big part of the McGuffey Reader Series. So that's really nice that your children will have to read a lot of poetry and they will have to learn how to decipher it. And sometimes it's not that easy and they'll have to kind of um, develop an abstract understanding of the English language, which is important uh, for comprehension and everything. Um, toward, at, by the end of this book, um, you will see that 
Um, oh, guess what? This lesson is about then about using profane language. Whoa. Yeah. This book actually addresses important issues about things you're trying to do your child. All children know what is meant by profane swearing. Yet, but few understand the nature and extent of the guilt incurred by it. Yeah. Okay, I just read something. It's supposed to be at a fourth or fifth grade level. <laughs> Did you hear that sentence? But few understand the nature and extent of the guilt incurred by it. Now, if your child is brought up to read things like this, when they get to college, they will have no problem. If they have to read some kind of a document for um, any type of business transaction, they will be on top of it. And you know what? Now, I showed you how gentle it was. It doesn't make them take huge leaps, but it expects them not to be stupid. <laughs> if it's not dumbed down, my dears, this, this right here is an excellent, excellent book. So, and I love this book. And this is like one of the most loved books in the whole collection because, you know, the kids at the age when they use that book usually aren't that careful with things. But anyway, that can go all the way up through the fifth grade, this book, this one book. Okay, now let's see, how many lessons are there? I will tell you. The total lessons in this book are approximately, oh, it's gonna be 85 lessons. So that's a lot of lessons. If you did one a week and you did, oh, let's see, the typical school year is about 30 weeks, you know, you'd have probably enough to last almost three years worth in this one book. So you could do like, like third, fourth, and fifth almost. I mean, you'd have to approximate. I'll explain how you do that too. Um, so then after that, I like to go into this third reader. Now I'm going to tell you something really cool about these. How they kind of have to. If you have a child that's going like, like a rocket ship and they're going really fast, and you see that they're really good at spelling and writing too, then. Maybe you don't want to hold them back and make them go the whole system. You can jump and skip around if you want to. It's your homeschool. You do it your way. Okay, so, um, but in this book, this, these books have a little better uh, illustrations, and the but, this, but the word lists are not that long. Okay. So if you see that your child, even if you start in this and your child's doing pretty well, you might skip ahead a little bit too. Yeah, because you're, you're, you remember you're, you're melding two different um, versions together. So it just depends on where your child, if your child needs some reinforcement, like that other book was a little too much, then you can start at the beginning and just reinforce for a while. Nothing wrong with it at all. In this book, there are um, 79 lessons, lots of stuff in here. Um, however, now let's see, so we're talking about fifth grade, maybe sixth grade with this. Fifth and sixth grade, um, by the end, we've got lots of poetry. You can see the text size. And we will also talk about the letter lists. Now, I mean the word list, sorry. By this time, the word lists look a little bit differently. They have a word with a definition. There are also usually some questions. No, I don't see any questions. Wait a minute, I thought there were questions. Just a moment. No, just words. Okay, so these words have definitions, which is great because what you can do is either, either make them copy the definition, which I don't suggest, or have them write sentences with each of these words. A lot of fun there. Okay, so that's the third, which is actually going to be fifth and sixth, probably. Okay, now here comes the fourth of the revised. The fourth of the revised, we're getting into some good heavy stuff. You want to do like seventh grade, probably seventh, eighth grade, probably in here. Okay, so by the end, we're, we're looking at words like um, ascertain, declivity, consultation, procession, representation. That's not too bad. But there's lots of poetry. Oh, really good stuff in here. Which, which shall it be? Oh, this is really good for large families. Which shall it be? Which shall it be? I looked at John. John looked at me. Dear patient John, who loves me yet, as well as though my locks were jet, 
And when I found that I must speak, my voice seemed strangely low and weak. Tell me again what Robert said, and then I, listening, bent my head. This is the letter. I will give a house and land while you shall live, if in return from out your seven, one child to me for I is given. I looked at John's old garments worn. I thought of all that John had borne, of poverty and work and care, which I, though willing, could not share. I thought of seven mouths to feed, of seven little children's need, and then of this. Come, John, said I, we'll choose among them as they lie asleep. So walking hand in hand, dear John and I surveyed, surveyed our band. First to the cradle light we stepped, where Lily and the baby slept, a glory against the pillow white. Softly the father stooped to lay, his rough hand down in loving way. When dream or whisper made her stir, and huskily he said, not her. And so they go through all their children, and they have to, they try to decide which child they'll give up, and they can't do it. <laughs> It's a very sweet poem. So that's what is in here. I mean, oh, I can't begin to explain the treasure that's in here. And I don't, I don't get any money if you buy, except if through Amazon affiliate. If you bought these on Amazon, I would get a little like ten percent kickback. But I mean, I don't care where you buy them, buy them from. I don't care if I get anything from selling these to you, because this is for you to have a treasure with your children. If America would turn back to these books. We would have an amazing revival that would sweep this land. I'm telling you, just amazing stuff. So anyway, um, so by the end of this book, back to our subject, off of the rabbit trail, Sherry. Um, by the end of this book, we're like, I was talking about 7th or 8th grade through here. Okay, now we're talking 9th and 10th, probably through your 5th. 9th and 10th grades. Okay, so we are talking, the text is extremely small. We're dealing with complex subjects, complex sentences, um, parts of books, um, just an, parts of speeches given before Congress and the Senate and stuff like that. Okay, these and amazing things, uh, historic things that nobody ever knows about or thinks about anymore, but they are in here. Okay, this is um, 9th and 10th grade. So now we're going to go through the sixth, sixth eclectic reader. Now this one is for about 11th, 12th grade. Actually, it probably in modern times would be more collegiate level. But if your kids have gone through all these, then this is just another step and they're not gonna have any problems with it. Okay, now we're talking minuscule <laughs> text. Okay, right, okay. If you have older eyes like mine, it's a little bit of a stretch unless you have your trifocals on <laughs> and then you can read it. Okay, um, some amazing stuff in here, but no words list, no definitions. Just the, uh, and um, what'll happen is at the beginning, they will have different authors and they will explain who the author was, what they are famous for, and then you will get the portion that you're reading from. Lots of these books I've never heard of, but I've since, you know, gone on Google Books and stuff and read whole books that were suggested here that have been lost to us. So they're very kind of interesting. Uh, observance of the Sabbath. They're very Christian, very godly subjects. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. This right here is God's goodness to such as fear him. And this is actually just a reprint of Psalm 37. So much for the idea that these are not Christian, okay? It says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. It's, it's exactly King James. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. I'm telling you, this is verbatim King James, Psalm 37. And I know that because that's one of my favorite Psalms. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is something that a young person should meditate upon. Here it is in this reader. And what you do is, if you use my lesson books, you can say, okay, pull out some words from here, make some sentences, do a narration and a dictate, no, a narration and uh, do some copy work and narration and you're done. Because the, the, the grammar and stuff in here is so advanced, it'll help them. I mean, they won't have any trouble with writing if they do that. The only problem they will have with writing is to know how to compose um, like put an essay together, like, you know, the rule where you have, um, you have your, your thesis, your thesis statement in your first paragraph, then you have three points, 
and then you make those three points on three paragraphs, then you have an ending paragraph that pulls it all together. So, you know the basic structure of an essay, know how to structure um, a, a, like a story, know how to structure um, uh, some poetry, you know, stuff like that. So you need something basic to teach them that, but otherwise they won't have any trouble with any other part of it. <laughs> they will be just fine. Okay, so there's that. Now when we talk about exactly how to place your child in the McGuffey readers, this is a whole other subject. And I want to talk to you here about how you determine that. Because it's, it's, it's not an easy task to try to figure out if you have someone that typically is reading at third or fourth grade level, how do you tell them? Where, you know, how do you determine where in any one of these books they go? So I'm gonna give you a simple way to do that. And I get this from Ruth Beechick's, um, the three R's. Okay, so there are three reading levels for anything that we try to read or a young child tries to read. Okay, there's an independent reading level an instructional reading level and a frustration reading level. Now, if you have your child at the frustration reading level, you're not doing it right. <laughs> because you don't want your child to feel frustrated when they're reading. You don't want your child to feel frustrated when they're trying to decipher words. And you know what? It puts a bad taste in their mouth for reading and it will discourage them for a long time. So you don't want them at an independent reading level because that means they're very comfortable and you're really not teaching them anything beyond what they can already do. You don't want to, you, you don't want to do that. So you want them, the perfect place is to have them to where they're comfortable but they're being stretched just slightly. Now, as I was talking before, that's how McGuffey works. Um, you're at a certain level and everything's repeated, repeated, repeated. So you just, but it's a little bit stretch each time. A little stretch, little stretch. And um, it gets them moving forward without feeling frustrated. But how do you know? Okay, so what you do is, this is what she suggests. Okay, pick a page or a number of pages in this case. I would just like pick a whole page in, the, in, in a, a McGuffey reader. And have the child read the words, read it through. Okay, then you're going to look at how many words are on the page. Now, for the earlier readers, you'll probably have more, no more than maybe 20 to 50 words on the page. That's okay, just adjust this accordingly, okay? You have to do a little math. <laughs> okay, but if it's 100 words per page, then that would mean that for the independent reading level, they would only miss maybe one or two words. They only have to struggle over one or two words on the whole page. And uh, for the instructional level, they would, they would struggle with maybe three to five words on the page. But for the frustration reading level, over five words per page, struggling with over five words per page, that's for 100, then that's too high for them, okay? You do not, you do not want them to have to struggle over lots and lots of words on the page, then you're way too high. Go back to a lower level and start at that lower level and check them again. So in other words, like if it was, let's say this first reader, okay. And let's say I pick this page. And in Johnny's reading, we'll call him Johnny. I have a little grandson named Johnny. Okay, and you say, in a short, and Johnny God, so he could, you know, okay, too high. If he's saying, in a short time, John got so he could drink without the sugar and then without any water, and he's going on, but every once in a while, just, that's, that's probably a good level. If, however, he's going, in a short time, John got so he could drink without the sugar and then without any water, I'm read, I'm exaggerating, okay? But if he can read it pretty smooth, and this is too low. Okay, you want them to little struggle every once in a while because you want them to be stretched. So does that give you an idea? You kind of basically have to have, now I've given you approximate level. So if you know the approximate level that your child is in now, you can pick that book and then go through that book and check it out. You know, say, like give him a page. If he's struggling, like 
a lot of words that are really hard and you've gone too high. So you want to go lower. And you might go way lower than that and check. And if he's just breezing through, you know, that's not good. So then you've got to go in the middle like Goldilocks and get it just right. <laughs> so that's basically how you do that. Now there's another idea that I want you to glean from that also. Is that it's not just that Johnny can read the words, but does he understand what he read? So then that's when you pick you, you've read it already yourself, or you've heard him read it aloud, and you, you pick some questions. You know, ask, so what about this, and what about that, what about the other thing? And if they can answer those questions without thinking, then you're probably at the right level. Um, if, or you're probably at independent reading level. If they're kind of, they answer most, but they kind of didn't understand quite this, then you're probably at the right level. If they go, oh, I don't know, I don't remember, then yeah, even though he could read all the words, he's not a good comprehension. Let me tell you something. Just because my child can read, now I have a child that actually reads high school level books in the area that she's interested in. Okay. However, I also know about this child that she doesn't always comprehend completely everything she reads simply because she hasn't been alive long enough and had enough experience to understand everything they're trying to convey. But I let her read at the level because what she does glean is good for her and she really enjoys it. However, when we're in the McGuffey Readers, I make sure she's at a place where she can really comprehend everything she reads. And even, uh, and I've, I have had people ask me, here's a question people are asking me about spelling levels. And I've got to tell you, because I, I appreciate what Charlotte Mason says about spelling, that it really is kind of a natural thing that should happen. Although some kids sometimes struggle more than others. Some kids are just natural spellers and they don't have to worry. I've got to tell you that a lot of my kids, once I started using the McGuffey Readers, I didn't really use any independent study on a spelling program. And they spell, like, really well by the time they're in. It's by the time they're in this level right here, they really don't need any help spelling. They're doing excellently. Now I have tried, there's a McGuffey Speller that is actually a revised McGuffey Speller and I think it's amazing. If you want to pick out some words from that and like once a week just go over them and talk about how they, and it's really arranged very logically. One thing I did too when I was really pressed for time and I thought it would be really helpful, I went to something called Flash Kids workbooks and the way they arrange their words is a little bit different their spelling rules but it still helped them really think about it and I did that with my kids for about like six months the ones that were struggling it really helped them and then they don't need any other help it's flash kids flash kids um I'll try to put the link below there and they're so cheap the spelling books are like six bucks and you can get them on Amazon or whatever and so I actually used the flash kits for about six months and I haven't had to do anything else just for some that were struggling. So it's so for the most part though, you won't have to worry about a separate spelling program for the McGuffey readers. And if you bought the set of the original McGuffey readers, it includes a grammar program that works just fine for grammar and you shouldn't have to buy anything else to go along with it unless you wanna just reinforce some things with your kids, but they shouldn't need anything else because that grammar program is amazing and even does diagramming. So I hope this has helped you. So uh, basically what you have to do is just be observant of your child, keep them from the frustration level, but also make them stretch more than the information level when they're just reading for fun or for something they're interested in. So I hope that helps you. I hope that clears up a whole bunch I try to cover everything. If you have any more questions, make sure and leave them in the comments and I'll try to get them get get to them in the next video. So you have a wonderful time. Make sure you like and subscribe. Okay. Have a great day. Bye-bye.